Today I'm going to try something new since we're all stuck at home and I thought it would be fun to combine two of my favorite things, beer and cooking. So as you know, we have a local brewery in town, Corner Point Brewery. They're located at 1 Sullivan Street. If you haven't gone, go. I'm requesting it now. I'll wait. All right, now that you're back, today I'm going to show you my secret recipe because people have been asking about it for a long time, how to make chili. And one of my secret ingredients is beer. So let's get started. I've already browned up a one pound of ground beef and one pound, oh, obviously of steak tips, but usually I use stew meat. My husband thought it would be fun to go to the store with my debit card and buy steak tips to get the family through this pandemic, not realizing that they're $84.95 a pound. So <laughs> here we go. I've already left all of the browning in the bottom of the pan. This will add more flavor to the vegetables. So I'm going to go ahead and add some olive oil. And I've already pre-chopped up one yellow onion, one orange pepper, one red pepper. And here's where you can adjust the spice level. I have one jalapeno pepper from my garden, one serrano chili from my garden, and one habanero. So my family likes it hot. We're going to burn this virus out of us one way or another. Although we are under a toilet paper shortage, so it might not be the best recipe for today, but here we go. <laughs> so while the pan's heating up, I'm going to go ahead and add my vegetables. And this would probably be easier if I had one of those handy dandy bench scrapers. So honey, can you put that in our Amazon cart? All right, so while these are cooking, we'll take about two or three minutes to brown this all up and get them nice and hot. So I'm gonna throw out some trivia questions. Does anyone know why they don't call this Texas chili, given my ingredients that I've already talked about? No, because today I'm gonna to be adding tomatoes, which they don't do in Texas. I'm also going to be adding black beans, which they don't do in Texas. So we're just going to call this Jessica's creation, Monday's creation. Okay, so once the vegetables come to, you know, a soft consistency, the onions get a little opaque, we can go ahead and add in our next ingredients. So tubed tomato paste the best thing you can ever have in your kitchen. You don't have the tiny little can when you only need to use a tablespoon. Keep it, it fits in your fridge, it lasts a long time, it's the best. So we have tomato paste and then my spice blend. For my spices I have five tablespoons of hot chili powder, one tablespoon of cumin, one teaspoon of oregano, and one, table, one teaspoon of chopped garlic, but my clove is really big, so it's really a, a teaspoon and a half, but no one's gonna judge me. Well, maybe you guys will, but yeah, leave it in the comments. All right, so now that the vegetables seem to be somewhat cooked here, I'm gonna go ahead and add my spices. So adding my spices now, what happens is it's going to bring out the flavors of the spices. They're going to stick to the vegetables. It's going to enhance the flavors. And as I'm doing this, I'm trying to scrape up all of the yummy little brown bits at the bottom of the pan. All right, without burning the spices, don't let them cook too long, I'm going to add about two teaspoons of tomato paste. And this is going to add a depth of flavor, but it's also going to help make the sauce a little combined so it's not so liquidy. So now that's all incorporated, here comes my favorite part. We're going to deglaze this entire pan with beer. Now Corner Point has several different options of beer. The obvious option, of course, would be down the hatch. But I'm not using that today. Well, I might just drink it. I'm actually going to go with Old Town Blonde. Now Old Town Blonde, if you guys are familiar, is a beer that is enhanced with a coffee flavor. Coffee and beef go hand in hand. They're like a perfect marriage. So I thought the coffee would really enhance the depth of flavor of the beef, the beef broth, and the tomato paste. So I'm going to go ahead and pour this entire pan in. 
and you're probably thinking, Jess, you lost your mind. Well, I did, probably years ago. But I promise you, when this cooks, it's all going to cook down, and it's going to give a great, great flavor. While we cook out a little bit of the alcohol, which is optional if you like it boozy, just add it at the end. Um, I'm just gonna stir out some of the brown stuff at the bottom, get that all up, because no one likes to scrub dishes at the end of the day, so that helps keep your pan clean. All right, to that, this is where the fun part starts. I add one and a half cups of beef broth, two cans of tomatoes with chili peppers, Again, this is why it's not a Texas chili. One can of tomato paste. And stir that all together. And now at this point, looking at what I have in here, we all say a small prayer that my meat's gonna fit. So again, I have the one pound of steak tips and then the one pound of hamburg, which I'm just gonna go ahead and add in right now. my cute little cast iron pan some corn. So what I did is I roasted the corn until it gets a little bit of brown. And what this is gonna add is a little bit of a sweet, smoky flavor to the chili. So I used about, I don't know, maybe a cup of frozen corn. And you don't even need to put any oil in the pan, just stick it in the pan and watch it for a couple minutes and it will roast right up. And then my favorite is black beans. I could eat these things out of the can, I eat them on eggs. I put them in just about everything. They're really good for you and they really, really go good with the corn in this recipe. So now that I have all of the ingredients added, this will just stay on a low heat for about four hours. For the first two hours, you're going to keep the lid on. When people say, Jess, why do you have such great arms? It's because I pick up this freaking lid. It's heavy. So for two hours, it's gonna stay covered. At the end of two hours, what you're going to do is go like this to the lid, and what that's going to do is allow some of the steam to come out and actually start thickening up the chili. At the end of the four hours, when you take the lid completely off, you're going to see that it might be a little watery, so if you like a little bit of a watery chili, you can stop there, but if you like your chili a little thicker, just cook it for another like 20 minutes maybe on medium, medium high, and that will evaporate some more of the liquid for you. So, I hope that you enjoyed my very first cooking video because I've been wanting to do this for a very long time. I hope it wasn't too long and too daunting. I did learn from presentation training that you have two minutes to capture your audience attention, so I hope I captured yours.